In this video, let's take a look at the components related to an input in Angular Material. When it comes to controls like inputs, text areas, and select, we always discuss them in relation to a common wrapper component, and that is the form field component. So when you talk about an input component, you're effectively talking about the form field component and the input component. Let's take a closer look at both those components in this video. The first step is to import the two concerned modules. So in material.module.ts, I'm going to import mat form field module and mat input module. Make sure to add them to the material array as well. Now we can create our first input control. So in app.component.html, I'm going to add mat form field and within these tags, I'm going to add input with a mat input attribute. Please make note that every input element has to have this form field wrapper. And to the input element itself, we add the mat input attribute. Now, if I save this and take a look at the browser, you can see that we have the most basic material input element. Let's see how we can customize this input control. First up, let's see how to add a label to the input field. Now to add a label, use the mat label component. So within the mat form field opening tag, mat label, and let's call this name. If you take a look at the browser, you can see the label. It behaves as a placeholder when there is no text. Start typing and the label floats to the top. And this is the default behavior. We can of course change this. So on the form field, make use of the float label attribute to control the behavior of the label. So float label can be set to never, in which case, the label will not float and is hidden when you type something. You can also set it to always, in which case the label is floating even when there is no text in the input. And you can also set it to auto which is the default value. Another important point is how the label is presented for a required form field. So if I mark the input element as required, you can see that now the label has the asterisk automatically appended. No additional styling is required. If you want to disable this behavior, you can make use of the hide required marker attribute on the form field. So hide required marker. If I go back to the browser, the asterisk is not present for a required field. The next thing we can do with the form field is setting a hint label. For that, we make use of the mat hint component. So within the form field, I'm going to add mat hint and let's have min five characters. If you take a look at the browser, you can see that the hint is placed right below the input. And by default, it is left aligned. We can right align it using the align attribute and setting it to a value of end. So mat hint align is equal to end. If you go back to the browser, you can see that the hint is now right aligned. Next, let's talk about appearance. We can control the appearance of the form field using the appearance attribute. By default, the appearance has a value of legacy, which is what we've seen so far. So appearance is equal to legacy. We also have an appearance value of standard, and this is just an updated version with more consistent spacing. So I'm going to copy, paste it, and change appearance legacy to standard. If I save this and go back to the browser, you can see that there is slight difference in how the spacing is for the standard appearance. 
Now we have two more appearances, fill and outline. So this is going to be fill, and this is going to be outline. The fill appearance displays the form field with a filled background and the outline appearance shows the form field with a border all the way around and not just an underline. So if I go back to the browser, you can see that we have a filled input element and then we also have one which has border all the way around. So this is fill and this is appearance outline. Finally, let's discuss about theming. By default, the colors reflect the primary color of the theme. We can set the color attribute to accent and also worn if required. So on the form field, color is equal to accent. And on this one, color is equal to worn. If we now take a look at the browser, the first control is accent themed and the second is warning themed. Now on a side note, please go through the documentation on how to incorporate error messages with form fields. It requires a bit of knowledge on Angular Forms concepts, which I will not be covering here. But the documentation is pretty clear, so you should be in a good position. All right, that is about the input control wrapped inside a form field component. In the next video, let's take a look at the select control.